Atlantis and the Fall of the Third Earth What brought down the Atlantean Empire and why it had to happen? The rise of the Fifth Earth and how it will differ from the Third and the Fourth Earth. As always, please question your reality and then change it. Thunderwizard.com is the website that supports this YouTube channel. If you like these videos, please go to thunderwizard.com, subscribe at any of the levels you like. I recommend the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong. Check out the higher dimensional energy practices. Personal mentorship is available, spiritual counseling, live Zoom group classes. Check out my books at michaelwilliamdenny.com. And please remember that every Wednesday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have live guided interdimensional meditations to bring 5D solar flash event. In my opinion, it is the single most powerful thing anybody can be doing on this planet to help shift humanity up to the next level. Today, we are talking about Atlantis and the fall of the third earth. We're going to be talking about we are headed into the fifth earth. Don't confuse that with densities or dimensions. Those are different things. And I'm going to be sharing with you my research as well as my recent awakened memories of what happened in the Atlantean Empire. And we're going to be talking about what we can do to bring about the rise of the fifth earth and how this will be, in some cases, completely opposite from the Atlantean Empire. All right, so I'm Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard. Welcome back if you're new to the channel. Uh, bear in mind that I never believed in any of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I thought the whole idea of Atlantis was absolutely preposterous. I thought it was New Age want to be you know and i still to be honest you know like the majority of the stuff that's out there talking about atlantis i think is pure fantasy but some of it turns out to be quite accurate i didn't believe in any of that stuff until i did ce5 which is close encounters of the fifth kind protocol fifth kind go look it up and uh, that is human initiated contact with higher dimensional extraterrestrials. That completely, totally blew open my reality, just nuked it wide open and uh, took me into understandings and realities and past lives and lives that went beyond incarnation. Uh, you know, what we're really like when we're outside of this third dimension. Anyway, I talk all about that in my books as well as in these videos. Um, but just to give you a little background, I still, when I talk about the idea of Atlantis, when I talk about the idea of the new 5D Earth, all that kind of stuff, there's a, there's a big part of me that just cringes because it's just so new agey and uh, completely preposterously sounding and unbelievable sounding. In any case, uh, I've had, as I often do when I'm wrong, I come and tell you I'm wrong. When I began communicating with very powerful higher dimensional beings, um, they started telling me about all of this stuff. So anyway, what I really want to focus on again is the fall of Atlantis. I, you know, I chose this I've got, you know, there's those free AI programs, and uh, I do that for my thumbnails, and this one popped up, and um, as I was just putting together the thumbnail, I, I broke down into tears and cried, like, you know, like weeping, like, ah, crying, really. I don't do that. You know, if somebody dies, maybe, you know, when my fiance died, yeah. I cried like that. Um, when people I, you know, family members died, yeah, I cried like that. But if I'm just putting together just a little thumbnail for a YouTube video, that's never happened where just the, the picture itself and the subject brought me to tears. And the reason is because, as I've shared with those of you who've been on the channel for a while, 
I want to say a month ago, it was a while ago, at least a month ago, I want to say. Um, as happens very often, some light beings showed up and I felt their energy and their power and they began telepathically communicating with me and they asked me a question and uh, by the way I was told I've been told up until that time many times uh, you were king of the earth you are king of earth you will be king of earth again I know it sounds completely unbelievable everybody has a past life memory of being uh, you know uh, whatever, some king of England or princess of whatever, or Cleopatra, you know, everybody has that. I know that. That's just the, the delusion. Everybody wants to be somebody famous and all that. I, I, I get that. So it's not lost on me when um, this is happening. This is, you know, bear in mind, this was among the first messages I got was a very powerful light being showed up and said, uh, first, we're going to make you king of the earth. Okay, and then started talking about this new earth that's coming. And then said, oh, by the way, you're always, you've been king of earth this whole time. You, you, you were king of earth. And then I got uh, a message with a very powerful being um, that I was told I was going to get an upgrade, uh, an energetic upgrade after leading the first live guided interdimensional meditation, which was in 2022. And now you guys know why I stopped doing it. I just did one and then I stopped for a very long time. You, you know now why. Because after that first leading people into that and going to the sun and sending energy to earth you know, to try to bring 5D awakening. Because again, I asked the light beings, I said, when is this shift going to happen? And they said, when you decide. And I said, okay, well, I've decided I want to do it now then. And went off and I did, I thought, I'll bring people into it, a life meditation. We did this meditation, went to the sun and sent energy to the earth. Yeah, it was powerful, energetic, but so what? So there's a lot of meditations. It doesn't mean anything. Afterwards, light beings were going crazy. They were jumping up and down. They were so happy. Thank you so much. You have no idea what you've done. You, you know, they did, they, I, and I didn't understand what the heck I had done. I just led a meditation. Next thing I know, um, light being shows up at night, I believe. I think I have the video. I tried to find it, but I have a video of me. I came out in the middle of the night in my you know, pajamas, and I'm talking about this thing that just happened because I didn't want to forget it. Uh, and this light being shows up and says, you're going to get an upgrade. And then this incredibly powerful being, the energy from this being was, I've never felt anything like it before or since and it was incredibly powerful and this being gave me I've already said this this being gave me a title and said you are now I swear to God I'm not making this up unless I'm crazy and I'm making it up uh, you are now supreme lord of this universe and um, said uh, we have we uh, we have something to tell you, and it's going to be very difficult for you to hear. You were once a very powerful king, and you created the dynamics, the infrastructure that laid the foundation for what the dark force elites are doing, and you created that infrastructure so that they could be doing what they're doing. Now, that was just information to me. It, it didn't mean anything to me. I didn't have any emotional connection to it. It was just very hard to understand, to be honest. It was just some information in my head. And that was two years ago. And, uh, you know, until then, the thought of being king of Earth or, or having been king of Earth or whatever um, was not that... It was just a, just a you know, bit of information. Maybe it was interesting or maybe it was desirable maybe my ego liked the idea or the thought of wow I'm gonna be I'm gonna be rich and famous in the next life maybe those kinds of feelings came up as well as the other feelings about what I would do if I was in that position but then you know what like I said a month or so ago light beings showed up and they said do you remember when you first met us and I just got this feeling they were Pleiadians 
Don't know where that came from. I don't even like the idea of Pleiadians. Again, it is just so, you know, ubiquitous and so just so typical, so stereotypical. The New Age Pleiadians and Arcturians, and I'm just nonsense to me. Just so bear in mind that's not lost on me. I'm having this this experience, and very powerful energy is being put into my body and telepathic message and beings say uh, and I get this feeling and I say are you Pleiadians and they said yes and we were your advisors when you were king of earth and I think they said king of Atlantis again I think because again Atlantis so stereotypical nonsense you know you know I think it's just hard for me to accept but I you know, if I had to make a guess, I would say they were saying that I was king of Atlantis when I was ruling the earth. And this idea that, and I don't know where I got this idea, I got it before those beings showed up, but I got this idea that Atlantis was uh, responsible for creating all of the spiritual technology, like the pyramids, which I believe are actually frequency generators for the entire earth. They have a bunch of other things that they do, a bunch of other, uh, uh, they're, they're very powerful pieces of technology and very spiritually sacred and important and, you know, lined up to all kinds of different things because that's where you get your power. This is what people don't understand. When I watch, like, uh, people talking about the ancient world, what they don't understand is that places like Gobekli Tepe, the pyramids, uh, Chaco Canyon, People will say, oh, this is just very sacred. Um, these are very sacred places, and they're aligned to the solstices and the rising of the moons and blah, 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 and different stars because it's, uh, it means so much. It's symbolic. No. It has to do with harnessing power. If there are sites that are aligned to sunrises and sunsets and equinoxes and all that kind of stuff and moon phases it is because those people are seeking power and they are they are they are gathering the power that happens in these very powerful uh, seasonal shifts and so just because something is aligned to all of these directions doesn't mean that it is sacred somebody might be taking the sacredness of it and manipulating it for their own power so and of course it depends on you know it's like any piece of any tool or any piece of technology it depends on the the uh, the intention of the user but you know for for instance Gobekli Tepe was buried Chaco Canyon was also buried. People may not know that. So the question is, why? Clearly, people, there was a huge, huge effort to bury all of the sites. You know, Gobekli Tepe is just one of, I think, perhaps hundreds in that whole area. And the same thing with Chaco Canyon. Huge amounts of energy was put into burying those sites. Now, we still were lucky enough, Chaco Canyon was still in this, this recent fourth world, and the natives there remember why. It's because they knew. And if you talk to the natives, you know, not, don't talk to the archaeologists, talk to the native people there. They will tell you that Chaco Canyon was used by the people who came before. We call them the Anasazis. They, they don't call them... You know, they don't look at them with reverence. They were people that were enslavers, and they conquered that area, enslaved people, and they had tremendous spiritual and technological power. And they will tell you these people used this site to gather power, which gave, you know, which they used for black magic purposes, which is about controlling and manipulating and enslaving. So uh, the thing about Gobekli Tepe, and I don't know this, but you know, I have this feeling it wasn't that 
what people are saying. Well, it was buried and so that we would, we would dig it up and we would remember. I think it might have been buried because it might have been a place uh, of power that was used by the elites to control. And it might have been a place after the flood where the remaining elites got together and tried to create another center of power by using old Atlantean spiritual technology, which means spirit, you know, technology of the stars and the sun and the moon, etc., etc. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, the WEF is, uh, is who owns that whole Gobekli Tepe site, and they are refusing to continue to do excavations. Why? You have to ask these questions. Why aren't, won't they excavate? So another way to look at it is it might have been a place of healing and regeneration that you know the, the survivors of the Atlantean deluge uh, went and took their knowledge and created Gobekli Tepe for however many thousands of years they were using it in order to bring balance and healing to the world. And guess who doesn't want that? The elites don't want that. So maybe the elites buried it because right now the elites are keeping it buried. But in any case, people need to understand that these powers, you know, these, you know, just because you align things to the sun and the moon, you know, you're going to be responsible for the power that you generate from that. So during Atlantean times, we had the knowledge and the ability to make use of these things. And uh, when you look at the Yugas, way back when it, uh, uh, Atlantis would have fallen 9600 BC look at there that was in Satya Yuga that means people had access in Satya Yuga you are connected a hundred percent to spirituality and to to the source so that means that these kinds of rituals and these kinds of uh, places like pyramids and and uh, you know other types of of things that are aligned to sun and moon etc they're going to have direct access to that power and uh you know we look at it and we spiritualize it oh they just did it because it gave them a connection and maybe they took some ayahuasca and they tripped out man no man these were these were scientists that were using this energy for what whatever their desires were positive or negative so we can get into this. I'll just go ahead. I've got a list here. So planet Earth is an experiment in consciousness for the gods. This is important to understand. Uh, as I said, I when I was putting this together, I broke down in tears and was weeping loudly. because Not because I consciously remembered anything. It's kind of a strange situation. It's like my body was weeping. But it's because I became aware once again that uh, what happened when I was king of Atlantis and king of Earth is I failed. I failed miserably and I, I used our spiritual technologies in an attempt. My, my intention I believe was to keep Earth at a higher vibrational state and I think as a result of that, I'm guessing now, this isn't what I remember is emotionally, I'm guessing this is probably what happened, is that that turned into uh, me being controlling and, um, you know, making decisions for the whole world and deciding that the world needed to be at this level and anybody who didn't want that was my enemy and they were or you know, trying to bring everybody down. And so I probably, probably took on this adversarial you know, role and used my power, manipulated and abused my power in order to, you know, keep my vision going. Now, there's something I don't remember, but um, the Pleiadians specifically told me that I started or engaged in wars. And um, that was the most difficult thing to hear. So I'm guessing if, you know, I went back a couple of uh, was it yesterday or day before and I and I did a journey to go back and try and relive 
who that person was that I was. You know, what was he like? You know, the, this king of Atlantis. And I got this feeling that he was very different from who I am now. He, this was, you know, 13,000 years ago, hundreds if not thousands of lifetimes ago. And uh, he was he was immature. He was, you know, he had all of the failings that I do now. He was uh, headstrong, egotistical, opinionated, um, argumentative, stubborn, uh, grandiose. You know, all of those things that, you know, by the way, those things aren't bad. Those make good leaders, good teachers. You got to have that to, you know, do certain things, but they're also um, faults. And he had all those. And he, he was immature. He didn't, he didn't understand. And so I had a different viewpoint. It wasn't, I look back on it and I did that because if I, as I am now, was back in this guy's place, I would have done things very differently. Um, but I knew what I knew and I, I was who I was. And here's the biggest thing about this that is really mind-blowing. We have, again, kind of a childish understanding of deities and gods and uh, light beings and spirit teachers. You know, this has been in the past couple thousand years since Abrahamic religions and since Buddhism. We've turned it into we idealize these you know, like, you know, worshiping the Buddha. We know that Buddha was a human, and so we idealize him as this perfect person. And again, Jesus, that same kind of thing. Jesus is this, you know, he walks on water, and I forgive those, you know. And so they have no negative, uh, they have no desires, they have no lusts, they have no, you know, human foibles. But you know, when we talk about mythology in the past, the Greeks, we condescendingly, because of Christianity, we condescendingly look back on it and we say, yeah, well, you know, in the myths, the gods have, you know, are imperfect and they have human tendencies. Now, the people, you know, in that time, the, Greek, the Greeks who were worshiping those gods didn't say that. You would have never heard a Greek person say, well, you know, the gods are, you know, they, they're, they're imperfect. And they don't talk like that. It's the gods are people. They're people just like me and you. They just happen to be in a higher dimension, which by definition gives them a lot of power. But they're still just as human as we are. So this idea of enlightenment where you get past all of that, that is, that is kind of a made up childish a spiritualizing projection of what we want. We want to be free of all of our pain. We want to be free of all of our conflict. And so we childishly uh, spiritualize that and project that. And it's extremely destructive. Look at what Christianity has done. You know, this belief that spirituality is to put a cross on your back and, you know, walk down Jerusalem, while people are, you know, throwing rocks at you and putting crowns of thorn on, on your head, and then have the God who created you uh, dish out all of his homicidal rage that he has for everybody else onto you. And we think that that's spirituality, and it's not. It is the epitome of untreated codependence. We might even say it's the epitome of communal narcissism, covert narcissism. It's extremely destructive. There's nothing empowering about that. So again, this is Kali Yuga. Of course, that's why it comes out in Kali Yuga, because we're only 25% connected to our spiritual understanding. So um, I ha I'm saying all this because I look back at this guy, who's supposedly me, and when I go into his thoughts and his feelings, he's a very different person. He's very immature. And he was doing the best that he knew how to do, but... As the energies started to descend, because again, this is happening, as Satya Yuga is descending into Treta Yuga, the, the frequency is beginning to descend. He's struggling with that. And even though he's trying to keep the world at a certain spiritual state, because he's using all of his knowledge and all of his technology to create things like the pyramids and you know, who knows whatever else he was he created. Um, 
he was doing that because he thought he was trying to save the world. And now as I'm talking about it, it was probably his projection of himself. He didn't want to lose his spirituality. He knew it was coming. And so he didn't accept his own journey into, you know, going into a lower frequency. So um, anyway, let's keep going. So 20,000 years ago, gods incarnated on earth creating 4D Earth. So I didn't start this off the way I wanted to. Many, uh, many traditions, including the Hopi and I believe the Maya, the Aztec, I don't know who else, they believe that there have been four Earths. And each Earth is a varying level of consciousness. And each Earth is created and then destroyed. You know, one is destroyed by fire, one's destroyed by ice, one's destroyed by water. Um, and so we're now in the fourth earth. And they're uh, predicting that there's going to be a cataclysm which will destroy the fourth earth, bringing about the fifth earth. What interesting that it's the same, we call it 5D. It's interesting that that's, you know, that, that synchronicity is there. So um, we would have been in the third earth. Atlantis would have been the third earth. So what's different about that? So the third earth is Satya Yuga. It's, it's the, you know, uh, where we would have been in the height of spiritual connection before it started to descend, which meant that we had access and we could see power and energy and manipulate that and use that and create technologies from that. Again, it's very clear that the, the pyramids were made with a technology we don't have. In fact, all of the major um, megalithic sites that are built, you know, with perfect seams and, you know, things like vitrification, which is using some tool that creates heat that's so powerful it actually melts the rock so that you can mold it perfectly. You know, we don't have the technology to do that now. But, you know, scientists will tell you that's what they did. They somehow figured out a way to do that. So, you know, we had tremendous technologies and uh, we were able to do things by using, like using sound, using meditation, using all kinds of other things uh, to be able to do stuff we can't even begin to understand. It's stuff that we would associate with extraterrestrial knowledge. It's why we do that, because they still have that knowledge, whereas we lost it. Now, the reason why Earth lost it and other planets didn't is because other planets are not the same, in the same uh, dimension, number one, they're not in the same universe, even if they're in our galaxy. So we need to understand that. This is something that, that all human beings need to understand. I didn't know this. I'm not telling you this because I read it somewhere or because somebody told it to me or I, I watched it on a video. Or it's not. It, I know this from personal visceral experience. It was one of the first practical physical realities that became evident to me after communicating with higher dimensional beings. It, I could feel it physically. I could, you know, it would open up into other realms. You know, it's absolutely unbelievable what happens when these beings come into your presence. And uh, I became, I was able to, to deduce very quickly that these beings are on a higher frequency. They're in a higher dimension. And Earth, the Earth that we're on, is a very specific closed um, dimensional space so that here on 3d planet earth the 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 dimensional experience we have is different from on other planets they have a different experience of reality than we do far different in fact just to give you an example if you go to another uh, planet depending on the planet you could be walking around and you'd see these tiny little huts, maybe 10 or 20 feet around. They don't look big at all. People live in those huts. The moment you poke your head 
inside the hut, when you look in there, it's, you know, the size of a football field. Put your head out and look around, it's 10 feet around. That kind of craziness, that stuff happens on other planets, doesn't happen on Earth. We're not capable of perceiving that. Um, so we need, the, the people need to know this. When they start, this is why I can tell you, I can tell instantly when somebody who's talking about aliens and extraterrestrials, I can tell instantly if they've had a real experience or if they're making it up or if they're deluded. Because unless you've experienced those other dimensions, you there's no way you could possibly make it up. You can't make it up. It's not something that the three-dimensional brain makes up. So I can tell instantly when somebody's either deluded or lying or both. And I can tell instantly when somebody has had a real experience. There's only one public figure talking about uh, extraterrestrials who I know, not because I, I, I know the person or have any, you know, uh, you know, feeling for him in any other way, but just because of the way he talks about the experiences uh, and the way he talks about what extraterrestrials are and how they function, I know that they've experienced it and he knows exactly what he's talking about. And that person is Dr. Stephen Greer. There isn't anybody else publicly, a big public figure, talking about extraterrestrials, ETs, Atlantis, who I get the feeling they know what they're talking about. I would love to list all the people I think are frauds or are deluded or both, but I'm not going to do that. But suffice it to say, there isn't anybody that I've listened to. Uh, some of the some of the natives, uh, uh, you know, the Native American lore about like the Kachinas and uh, their understanding of the, the five Earths and all that. When I listen to them, even though it's still a little bit stylized, even though there's still a little bit uh, poetic and, um, you know, there's some symbolism there. Underneath it, I can tell that what they're talking about is true, that knowledge has been given to them, passed down from people who've been to those places. And maybe the people who are sharing the knowledge haven't been there, so they, they're using the terminology that was given to them so that they could understand it. But I can be able to read through it. So I don't know why I got into that, but... Um, my point was that the gods came and lived on planet Earth, and I was one of them. And it was not unusual for deities to take human form, to for there to be, you know, all different kinds of, you know, just like Lord of the Rings, all different kinds of, of conscious beings. Some of them were completely human, some of them were half human and half god, some of them were... Uh, extraterrestrials walking around. Some of them were non-physical beings. And all of this stuff sort of intermixed. So this is why I was king of Atlantis. I, I had chosen to incarnate as a human being, even though I retained my awareness of, of my deity status. Um, and I had, uh, I had Pleiadian advisors who were not part of this dimension, who are not part of this realm. And I interacted and communicated with them, but we lived in Satya Yuga, so the the veil was very thin. Anyway, I'm getting off on all kinds of tangents here. So 20,000 years ago, gods incarnated on Earth, creating 4D Earth. So I'm saying there's uh, a 4D Earth, and it was a 4D Earth because we were in Satya Yuga. But when we fell, um, we created a fourth earth that was in 3D. Does that make sense? So the third earth was in what I'm going to call 4D, which was a higher dimensional experience than what we have now, but not as high as 5D. And when we fell, we fell down to the fourth earth, which is our current 3D experience. Does that make sense? Um, 4D Earth was the third Earth, highly spiritual and technological, technological. So we were still living in Satya Yuga, even though it was the third Earth. 
And uh, because we were in Satya Yuga, I, you know, looking back on myself, I was a less mature, less experienced earth soul, even though I had all this power and all this knowledge and all this spiritual understanding and connection, I was still immature. So we made the mistake of getting wrapped up in technology. Now by technology, I mean being able to use sound and mantra and meditation and energy work and things like that to do things like create the, the pyramids and you know, uh, the flying machines that we had and all that other stuff. We were really into spiritual technology, which basically is the same kind of technology that uh, extraterrestrials now use. We were really into that. And it was spiritual. It was coming, from, you know, we can't do it now because we're not tapped into that. You know, for instance, in order to be able to lift the stones of the pyramids and be able to cut them, we need to know how to use our, our voices to be able to create a certain frequency that will make the stones levitate or to be able to use the elements like water or air or fire, things like that. Like, you know, scientists now know that way back then, um, people used vitrification, which is to use heat that was so hot it could it could burn and melt and mold the rocks. Well, that wasn't done necessarily with a blowtorch. It was done with mastery of the elements, being able to, you know, there were teams of people who could master the elements and create huge balls of fire that were so hot they would, you know, burn holes in the, the side of mountains and things like that. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see, how did I get onto that? So, uh, yeah, we were highly spiritual and highly technological. We got wrapped up in that, and we didn't focus really on the spiritual aspect. We took spirituality for granted, and we used it to create technology, is my point. Um, 14,000 years ago, the 4D third earth began descending. So I talked to you about that. My past self didn't like that idea and tried to hang on. And the Pleiadians tried to talk me out of it and I didn't listen to them. And I decided I was going to keep, I was going to save the world and I was going to keep it at a certain frequency. And looking back on it, really, I was projecting onto the world my fear of losing my connection. Because it's what gave me my power. And it's and of course it gave me joy and all and connection to my godlike self, and I didn't want to forget. Now, looking back on it now, I can see that's what I was doing. Back then I thought, no, I'm doing this for everybody else. You don't understand. I'm saving the world. And of course, as we talked about, the earth started to descend in frequency because it was moving away from the galactic center. And as a result, the frequency on Earth, just the entire solar system, the frequency started going downhill. And uh, I artificially kept the frequency up and then like a rubber band, it snapped. And when that happened, the whole thing came crashing down. And that was the Younger Dryas cataclysm. Uh, Atlantis had 40 technology but was losing spiritual connection. I already said that. The Atlantean princes rebelled resulting in world wars. So this is the part that's fuzzy to me because I, I'm not sure I really want to remember it. Uh, but uh, I, I was specifically told that I engaged in warfare. So there's, you know, there's stuff in the Mahabharata about using things that people think are nuclear weapons. They're not, they weren't nuclear weapons, but they had the, the, the power probably more power than nuclear weapons. And there's places on the world, you know, like an entire city would, you know, and people were you know, turned to glass. Some kind of major tech, you know, high tech something that just destroyed an entire city. And uh, I would venture to guess that that might have been, might have been me who did that. But it wasn't nuclear weapons. People say nuclear weapons because that's the only thing we can reference. We can't imagine anything more powerful. But there's stuff far more powerful than that. We already have that. You just don't know it because the deep state hasn't revealed to you the directed energy weapons they have. But um, I'm pretty sure that I used my understanding of technology to fight this war. Princes were, you know, my 
you know, I was ruling from Atlantis and then there was all these satellite countries and states that were allied, you know, that were vassals to the one empire, blah, blah, blah. And um, they rebelled for whatever reason. I think it was a combination of everything was up for grabs. I think there was people who were rebelling because they saw that what I was doing was unnatural and, and destructive. And I think that there were people who were grabbing for power, seeing that the the empire was coming apart and so there was power to be had and they wanted to break away from my influence and have their own, who knows what, it was just became a free-for-all. And definitely I, I had been betrayed. There were princes who betrayed, who betrayed me, who, um, you know, conspired against me and uh, lied to me, all kinds of other things. And then there were people who were just openly rebelling. And uh, it was a mess. And uh, I don't know this. I don't remember it. But I think probably what happened is I, I used some technology to destroy things and people and places. And that's when things got really bad. Um, so the light being councils decided to intervene with comets. I'm guessing at this one, but they do this kind of stuff. So I believe that the light beings saw what was going on and realized that, um, earth was descending. And because I had not done my job, which was to guide people into the dissension in a way where we use the technology to focus on spirituality instead of me having the wherewithal to do that. Um, I did what I did and the council said, we got to stop this because if they don't, you know, he'll, he'll destroy everything or the, or humans. Maybe I wouldn't, but the other, you know, people who became even more corrupt than I did and who really were corrupt, who really were all about power and enslavement, um, they had access to this technology as well. And um, in any case, human beings were no longer no longer worthy of it. And if they kept using it, it would be they would destroy themselves. You know, what's interesting, and I never understood this until now, but when I first started lear learning the spirit fighting, the Maoshan spirit fighting, I came home from the first day of the, you know, the secret class that I went to, which was I was supposed to keep it a secret. And I went and I came home and I was doing the first posture and I got filled with this energy and uh, looking back on it, I know what it was now, a light being was standing next to me and told me, in fact, it was probably a Pleiadian because they come to me on my left side. And this being showed me um, a nuclear bomb exploding and said, this is the power you're tapping into. It's extremely destructive. And then he said, if you abuse this power, it will be taken from you. You've been chosen to learn this. And I, I didn't understand any of that. I didn't understand you've been chosen to learn this. I didn't understand that. And I didn't understand the if you abuse this power, it will be taken from you because I didn't see myself that way. I mean, I, I, if you had told me and said, here's this kind of power, I would have said, I don't want that. Um, so it was kind of almost offensive. I mean, I didn't take offense to it, but it was like, that person doesn't know me. Because if somebody knows me, they wouldn't say that. Well, this person did know me and knew that uh, that was something that happened in the past. And in fact, they've come to me in other times and earlier on in my interactions with them and they've said things like, you know, you're, you control the entire universe. We give you complete control over everything. Okay, now you have all the power in the universe. What would you do? You can snap your fingers, change things. You can do anything you want. What are you going to do? And I went, oh, hang on. Let me think about it. And I thought about it, and after thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that if, if it was up to me, I would give everybody the freedom to have the autonomy to make their own decisions, even if the decisions they make will bring them to a lower reality. Because I realized until people want to, from within themselves, spontaneously and authentically want to learn and to grow, 
you can't impose it on them. So in other words, I couldn't just snap my fingers and put everybody in 5D because eventually they'd destroy it if they weren't, if it wasn't something that they had autonomously went and created. And looking back on it, and you know, every time that they do that, they've come to me and they said, if you had a choice between power and wisdom, what would you take? We'll give you either one you want. Which one do you want? And I, and I think about it and I go, wow, power would be really great. I go, but you know what? Wisdom is better. And every time I say that, I say, I, I think I'd, I'd prefer wisdom. And they go, good, that's the right answer. You passed the test. You know, and so now it all makes sense. You know, to be honest, when they're doing this, it feels very childish and like, you know, why this is, why are you giving me these kind of childish questions? Well, it's because uh, apparently I was given that power 14,000 years ago and I screwed up. So it all makes sense now. Anyway, I was on to something and I got wrapped up in my own story. Um, so the Light Being Councils decided to intervene with comets. So I believe, I don't know this, I'm just guessing here, that they do this kind of stuff. Where the councils got together and they said, you know, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to wipe the slate clean here. Um, so they sent uh, comets to the Earth. And by the way, I think it's the, the comets that are coming to Earth now... There's two Atlas comets. One has already passed us by, and another one is on its way. It's going to pass by the sun uh, on, on the 28th. I believe that those comets are fragments of the comets that originally uh, brought the, uh, the flood catastrophe. All right, so then uh, Earth fell rapidly into the fourth Earth, erasing third earth technology that makes sense the survivors of atlantis formed two groups of dark and light i don't know this for a fact i'm making some guesses and my intuition is telling me this is what happened we know from mythology all over the world all over the world we know that there was a big flood and it was the gods the gods had destroyed most of earth and destroyed most of humanity because they had become evil and corrupt and destructive and and that's everywhere it's the, you know the biblical version which came from the sumerian version and then there's all kinds of things all over the world from societies that didn't have any connection with each other 13,000 years ago and they all say the same thing and um why is that important again Oh, so uh, two groups come out of this. So after this, you know, uh, like people in South America start talking about these, you know, white bearded people show up and start teaching them technologies, teaching them farming. And, and, and you know, if you, there's an actual thing in the Amazon. Amazon is not good farming soil, but there's a, when we look in the Amazon where there's uh, evidence of ancient, you know, now long gone civilizations, there is soil that has been created, it's been man-made that is uh, self-regenerating soil that you can plant crops in. So there's evidence that human beings had tremendous technology to, you know, to become farmers and all that kind of stuff. So the native people of uh, Central and South America all have this, you know, these strangers came from the ocean or from the sky. Sometimes they're gods, sometimes they're wise beings or people, but they come and they teach them how to, you know, repopulate the earth, how to, how to build cities and how to uh, farm and et cetera, et cetera. So I would say that those were, were people who survived uh, this Atlantean empire. And, um, you know, they're going around doing the right thing, helping people, you know, create a good life. They're not teaching them technologies that are, they don't need, teaching them technologies, teaching them spiritual technologies as well. You know, where did, uh, you know, things like yoga and Qigong and mantra and all of that, some of it has been downloaded from light beings and some of it, I think, was held uh, in memory from that time. So we have that. So my my theory is that those are the people who came and have given human beings good stuff. But I also think that there were people who survived that who 
were of the elite class, who were corrupt, and who um, remembered some of the technology. And they have been communicating with each other and they have created these secret organizations. And it has been their plan since, you know, since the, since the, the flood. It has been their plan to get their hands on, the, uh, on that technology again and to create the world they were trying to create, which is exactly what's happened. They've now got their hands on a lot of it. And um, they're doing, they're finishing what they wanted to do way back when. The, I do believe that there were people that uh, rebelled against me and used technology in destructive ways, which is, I think, part of the reason why I engaged in warfare against uh, people who I, I think I believed were corrupt and dangerous. And um, in any case, um, I think those people survived, and they survived in uh, all of the secret organizations we have now. I mean, it's pretty clear that these people use black magic and uh, are doing all kinds of really, really horrible things um, in order to keep their power and to be able to have the kind of abilities that they have to not only use technology and um, mass media and everything else, but I think they have a lot of spiritual power, negative spiritual power. Because again, power is power. You know, I mean, I learned this when I learned the spirit fighting. I, I had I had spiritual power that I could have used martially. And I made a decision early on. I made a decision almost from the very beginning when I saw how powerful it was that I was, I became a pacifist. That under no circumstances would I ever use my martial abilities on somebody else. My first first time I said that was unless somebody around me is being attacked or robbed, then I would use it. And then I said, wait, I'm never going to manifest that. I am never going to manifest a scenario where I have to protect somebody using this. Under no circumstances will I ever use this unless I'm teaching somebody. And that is so that they can tap into the power. Um, why did I get up on that? Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't remember why I said that. Anyway, um, so there's light groups that taught people farming and spirituality and dark groups that descended into black magic and reviving old technology. So I think that's where we're at now. And so I think because of that, we have the same thing going on that we did before. There's going to be a destruction. There's going to be, uh, you know, wipe these people off the face of the map. And um, But instead of it being like it was last time, the comets coming and hitting Earth and destroying the physical technology. I think what's going to happen is these comets are going to come by and among other things, they're going to stimulate the sun to release a lot of uh, the energy that we've been sending to the sun to, I hope, I don't know, but I hope there is a solar flash event. I hope there's a singular event that releases enough energy all at once that shifts everybody up and those that don't want to go up will will get knocked down. And perhaps they'll have an experience like I did, where there's this destruction of the earth and everything falls. And, you know, um, they might have a, a cataclysmic event in their frequency of earth. And those of us who um, want to shift up will have an instantaneous shift up, perhaps to another frequency or dimension. I don't know that. I, I want to believe that, and I hope if you give, if I, if I have anything to say about it, that's how I would design it. And I've said as much to the light beings, because they've asked me, they've said, what would you do? And I laid it out. That's exactly how I would do it. I would have a, I would have a lead up event where there was a buildup of spiritual energy that created uh, an awakening over a period of time, and that there would be... Um, a an exposure of all of the secrets that the dark forces have been doing to people and planet earth and that people would wake up and then there would be a level of awakening where people would have to choose which way they wanted to go and then i would have uh, an instantaneous event that came and hit the earth and uh split 
the world. And wherever somebody's mindset was, that's where they would go. And I would keep the connection between those two frequencies going for a while so that people who were in the, you know, the, the third, the 3D part would be able to make choices to want to move forward and shift up. And then when everybody had made their final decision, we would get rid of the third dimensional earth and there would just be 5D and the 2D. And the people on 2D would have uh, a really challenging environment where their soul had to face their issues and learn and grow. That's how I would do it. If it was up to me, that's how I would do it. And that's how I hope it happens. Having said that, I'm prepared that that's not going to happen and it might just be a slow transformation. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how it's going to happen. I, But that's where I'm at now. So anyway, that's my talk about the Atlantis and the fall of the third earth. And I know it sounds crazy and weird and uh, I'm okay if you don't believe it. I'm not sure I believe it, but those are my thoughts and my experiences. Anyway, I hope this is helpful to you, entertaining. Again, always, please remember coming up tomorrow, we have live guided interdimensional meditation to bring 5D solar flash event. And it's extremely important now more than ever. I really need your support. I'm getting into some really dicey stuff coming up over the next six months. And um, if I'm not able to bring in more finances, uh, who knows what will happen. So I need your support more than ever. If you've been on the fence about subscribing to the 90-day challenge, for example, or if you've been on the fence about um, having personal sessions with me or becoming an apprentice, or if you've been on the fence about uh, going to the shop and getting the five, uh, the Maoshan Five Element Spirit Fighting. Now's the time. Now's the time to do that. Uh, the channel really needs your support. Having said that, I really appreciate everything that you do. And always on all the videos, you can always just click the, the uh, dollar sign icon if you want to throw some money at a particular video or a live stream. You can always do that. Um, anyway, that's it, my friends. The most important thing you can do is do the live guided interdimensional meditations because we are changing Earth every time we do that. And so, anyway, that's it, my friends. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. You're the most powerful being that ever existed. The only thing you need to do to be loved is just simply exist. There's literally nothing you can do that will make you more lovable than you are at this moment. And until next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Thank you so much. Oh. Uh...